What is a kitchen hack that you can use to amp up the savory factor of your recipes at home? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you a brand new ingredient called umami powder and how you can use it to boost the flavor in just about anything with a dry seasoning for french fries and steak and even how to make a brand new plant-based steak. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients, techniques, and show you how to do all this in your own kitchen. So remember, subscribe and ring the bell, and you will get notified of our content when it comes out on Tuesdays. And this week, we are super excited because we're talking about a brand new ingredient. It's called umami powder. So you may have heard the word umami, but today we'll talk to you about how you use it to punch up different recipes, add more savoriness, and Scott is extra excited because he has a new plant-based recipe that he can't wait to share with you. So, Scott, why don't we start off with a little bit about what is umami for people who haven't come across it before? Yeah, so umami, actually a lot of people think umami just isn't a real thing, and they think it's a, it's a made up term, but umami is a real thing, and it's basically savoriness. So we can taste savoriness. When we, when we eat certain things, we can taste that savoriness. So umami powder is a really special ingredient that it takes all the great things from soy sauce and it allows you to have that really rich umami flavor without like a super uh, like beanie forward, you know, soy forward flavor. So mm -hmm. it's really nice to get the, all that extra flavor in there. And a little bit about what umami really is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we have sweet, we have sour, we have salty and we have bitter, but umami is the last one. And that comes from glutamic acid. So there's a wide range of different ingredients that different foods that have glutamic acid in it. Uh, so when you have those things, let's say like chicken, if you've ever had chicken uh, skin that's been roasted in the oven, that's super rich in umami. Mushrooms, extremely rich mm -hmm. in umami. And one of our recipes had a lot of uh, mushroom powder in it, and that was our plant-based burger recipe. So we thought, why not take that out and then add in something that actually has quite a bit more umami flavor, and it doesn't have that mushroom flavor, so that's kind of where we came up with, you know, adding the umami powder to it. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I think where people um, come across umami is MSG, which yeah. we've done oh, an yeah. episode about that. You can check that on the link in, des in the description below. And while we are, you know, pretty big fans of MSG here, there are certain people who, for a variety of reasons, choose not to use it. Yeah. And if you are one of those people, umami powder is certainly an alternative for you because it does not contain uh, MSG. Um, so, what are some of the ways that people can use umami powder? So really you can use umami powder anywhere you want to kind of add a little bit of saltiness and a lot of richness to any dish. So we mm -hmm. actually made an um umami powder uh, like dry seasoning that goes great on anything. So to mm -hmm. take off like a Montreal seasoning, uh, so it's uh, got a lot of black pepper, it's got some uh, chili flake, a little bit of oregano, uh, a little bit of celery seed. So it's our own kind of blend, but then we add in the umami powder and it'll really stick to everything and really kind of intensify that flavor. Yeah. So are these fries dusted with them? Yeah, the fries are dusted with them and also one of the steaks is dusted with them. You can put it on anything. So it doesn't have to be plant-based. You can mm. place it onto you know, anything that you absolutely want to make more flavorful, more rich. Yeah, and these fries are excellent. Like they, there is just like that, you can't really, if you, if you don't know what it is, like you just can taste that it's just it's safe. like mouth-watering. Yeah, just mouth-wateringly tasty. Yep. I'm gonna keep eating these fries throughout the episode. <laughs> Yeah, that right. makes for great audio. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so let's go into actually making of the, uh, the plant-based steak because this is a really new thing that we wanted to tackle. About a year ago, we made our plant-based burger recipe. If you haven't seen that, link in the description below. Mm. But we've tried and tried and tested and done so many different things. So it's pretty much a year in the making of getting to something that is almost as close as we can get to a whole muscle protein. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. First, we're going to start with our textured wheat protein. So the textured wheat protein is similar to textu textured vegetable protein, but they have more f long fibers like this. And those long fibers will help mimic like a, a plant-based steak or a plant-based chicken breast, whatever you attempt to make. Here we're making plant-based steak. So if you want to see the entire uh, recipe from beginning to end on our Instagram, we're going to be doing it. And also here on the YouTube channel, you'll see it in a few days. Uh, so we have a wet mix here and this wet mix here is basically some of our burger binder as well as uh, a little bit of 
um, amino acids and some liquid smoke to kind of give just a, a little bit more richness to it. But we will add in the umami powder when we add in the dry mix. So I'm going to add this in. This also has beet powder. That's why it's so pink. So I'm going to add this directly into here. And I'm going to mix this up. Now, typically in the recipe, we're going to let this sit for 15 minutes, but we're not going to do that here because mm -hmm. we'll just stand here and talk for 15 minutes. So I'm going to mix this up until it just barely coats all of those uh, textured wheat proteins. And over time, it'll pull out the moisture and really kind of dye them that uh, pink color. Mm -hmm. In the interest of speed, next thing we're going to do is we have a brand new type of fat that we made, and this is called binding fat. Some of this will get added directly into the meat itself. Mm -hmm. The second portion of it, I like to take, and you could just put this into any like zip top bag. We just vacuum sealed it, but you can put it in here and you spread it out. When you put this in the freezer, then you're able to lay it over the edge. And you can see on the outside of this plant-based steak, there's like a bit of fat on the outside. So it's a little bit of chewiness and it also has some coconut oil in there. So it's really rich and it re works really well. And I'll show you a fully uh, made one in a little bit. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put in my new binding fat, right? And that has a lot of the burger binder as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to mix this in directly. So we have our original fat. This is our marbling fat. This will kind of melt right off and give you a really juicy steak. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to place all that in. And we want to keep these nice and like chunky because you want to have those almost veins of, okay. of fat running through. So I froze these down after I cracked them up. So, yeah. so if you want the full recipe to the plant-based steak, it yep. will be in the description below because this is actually a pretty involved process. Yes. So <laughs> we would definitely strongly recommend reading through the recipe in detail before attempting to do this at home. Yeah, there's a lot of little things in there that you want to make sure you do right because even uh, different temperatures of the water you use can actually affect it. So we have our dry mix here. This has vital wheat gluten. This has uh, some of our uh, transglutaminase TI that also works with fava bean protein. So we get that really tight kind of uh, muscle structure. And then we have our umami powder. So I'm gonna add the umami powder directly in there. And we've tested different amounts of umami powder. You mm -hmm. can really taste it. It really gives it just that, that rich kind of craveable taste that, that you want from yeah. you know any plant-based food, really any food in general. So I'm going to get this mixing up and I'm just going to sprinkle this in. Now the idea is to have the, uh, the plant-based, I'm sorry, the <laughs> vital wheat gluten creative network around all these as well as the fava bean protein to really kind of tighten it up and make a really nice, um, nicely structured kind of plant-based steak. So I'm going to get this mixing and I'm just going to sprinkle this in. If, um, if you haven't tried it, or if you have tried some of our other plant-based recipes, like for example, the chicken nugget or the plant-based burger, it's really different what the umami powder brings to those recipes. If you were to decide you want to add them, you're certainly more than welcome to, because yeah. when we were testing and Scott kind of brought side by side one sample with no umami powder and one sample with, like it, it made such a huge difference that one it was just so much so much more like tasty than the other one it, mm -hmm. it was incredible like what just adding a little bit of that to this mix does yeah so we can see the mix mm -hmm. right here let me actually get a spoon that might work better so we have the mix here and over time that pink will kind of come out and make it a really really bright pink color mm -hmm. but when we take it we wrap it and we're actually able to make it into a steak shape so i'm going to move this off to the side we're actually able to make different steak shapes, right? So right here we have kind of like a tenderloin, mm -hmm. right? And then here we have a ribeye. So we, on our Instagram, we made the full ribeye. So you can see okay. this one actually being made. When you do that, then you allow it to sit for 24 hours. And the pink, the beet powder will then seep into the, the binding fat. So when you sear it up, it'll be you know, nice and brown. The entire thing will get brown. So we're actually going to cook one of these here just so we can see it. And of course, the umami powder will help the browning as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do a little bit of salt. Yeah, and one of the really nifty things that I think Scott was able to achieve with this new binding fat is that yep. the fat sticks around. It's really amazing it that it amazing. doesn't melt away. So you do really do end up with having this kind of vein of fat in your steak, just like meat. It's yes. awesome. Yeah. So th there's actually a, a great, if we could see, you can see all the little bits on the inside, which is the uh, marbling fat. Mm -hmm. And then around the outside is that binding fat, right? And it's going to actually hold on to, you know, the, the muscle structure, 
that we've kind of come up with, as well as giving a little bit of extra added chew, especially to the outside. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna get this in here. We can actually see how well it cooks up. I know, and I know I can already hear the first question, which <laughs> is, you know, like, can I just use like one type of fat throughout the whole instead of trying to add both types of fat? So, you can. If you wanted to go without the binding fat, I would definitely suggest at least making some of it to put inside the, the steak itself because all those things that go into making the, the structure really nice, mm -hmm. they, they need every single one of them to, to help make that structure. If you don't want to put it on the outside, you can absolutely do that. You don't need that on the outside. Do I like it for certain things like, let's say, a stew? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, you get like a little you know, chunk of that and it's got some extra chew to it. It's mm -hmm. really nice in something like a stew. If in a taco, maybe you need a leaner piece or, you know, leaner piece. Mm -hmm. So you, can, you don't have to necessarily use that. So it's really up to what you want. I would absolutely suggest making sure it gets mixed into the, to the, um, the meat mixture or else without it, it's going to just be a little too soft and you might as well just make burgers at that point. Yeah. And what do we, while that's cooking up, what do we have here in these two plates? So these two plates, we actually have a steak that we made and then we have our uh, plant-based steak here. And the steak that we made here has a little bit of our uh, umami seasoning on it. So if you want to okay. take this and forks over there, just sure. take from the back side. So. Okay. Yep. Try what? One of each? Yeah. You can taste one of each. All right. That is his regular steak. Yes, so we have regular steak here. Mm, very savory. <laughs> mm. And that that steak's uh, in the works for another a new upcoming episode. But Ooh. stay tuned. Oh, this steak is good. But uh, I'll try the other one too. Okay. Yep, and you can see, you know, the, the muscles in there. Yeah. The fibers in there. And how similar they look. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because you can manage to get this great char on the outside. Yeah, that's one of the best things is. We did so many tests with this, you know, the outside will char, but if we didn't let it rest and get that, you know, kind of pink all the way through, we wouldn't get the same char on the, the binding fat. So mm -hmm. if we don't allow it to sit, you're not going to get that char on the binding fats. Yeah. And this plant-based steak has such a... Um, See the beautiful color that yeah. we just got on there, so... Like the steak texture is so different from... I think anything else that we've tried on the market, as yeah. well as any of our previous recipes. So it's not just like, oh, it's our burger recipe, but we shaped it into a steak. Yeah, so and it's, it's totally different. It's amazing that. that it's so firm too that you can actually do things with it. You can uh, braise it like we've done here. Uh, mm -hmm. You could definitely pop it on a grill as long as you oil it, just so it's not sticking. But mm -hmm. it works so well. You can sear it just like we're doing here. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can shape it however you want, and you can really. Yeah, that's actually amazing. The stew is a really amazing kind of uh, application for it because it's so rich, it's so meaty, and it holds up to a braise. Yeah, if you just look at this, like I'm just kind of bouncing this around and it's not falling apart at all. Yep. I'm gonna just tilt mm. this and get a little bit of color on that, that fat, just so we can see it, right? It's amazing, like I can push on this and it's starting to firm up, it's starting to, you know, uh, cook through so you get kind of that gradient if you want it to look medium rare you want it to look well done you can mm -hmm. do whatever you want with it it just depends on your cooking time right mm -hmm. so you can get a little bit of that color on there yeah the texture of it is unbelievable <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'm pretty proud of it mm -hmm. it's a very difficult thing to do but i think we we have a success here um obviously it's up to you guys to see if, mm -hmm. if they really like it but yeah great so this can come off obviously you can tempt this uh, just like a normal steak, but if we look at this, just how beautiful the crust is on that. Mm -hmm. And then if we, touch it like, yeah, there's my tweezers. Turn it around so we can look at the the fat on here. Just how well it browns up. Obviously, if you just like a normal steak, if you want to get every single side of it, you absolutely can, and mm -hmm. just treat it like a normal steak when it's uh, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. I'll do so right here. Yeah. Ooh, but other than that, I think we're, we're pretty good. Yeah. And, you know, if you're, if you're at home and you're like, oh, can I do this without the umami powder? Yes, you can, but it will not taste the same. I think that much we can guarantee, yeah. which is that you want like a certain like depth of flavor that comes with like a really nice piece yes. of steak. And you don't get that from just adding soy sauce or salt mm -hmm. or, or, you know, a, any of the many other ingredients in here. So um, there's really actually one more thing, too, because oh, people may say, 
can they switch out the umami powder for, let's say, the mushroom powder in the uh, in the burger mm -hmm. recipe and things like that? So you absolutely can. If you wanted to switch it out for uh, MSG in any recipe, you could just switch it out. Uh, mm -hmm. It has that saltiness that you're looking for anyways. Uh, but yeah, in the burger recipe, in the sausage recipe, if you wanted to switch it out for the mushroom powder, you absolutely could. Yeah, and there are just so many other ways to use it. Um, I love how versatile it is that you can use it, not just in plant-based recipes, but in all kinds of different mixes, mm -hmm. seasonings, toss it into like a soup or a stock just yes. to amp up that flavor. It, it's really, you really can't go wrong yeah. with it, which is what we love about this ingredient. So you can catch this video of making up the steak on our Instagram right now at Modernist Pantry or on this channel in a few days. If you have any questions about anything that you see here today, remember just leave it in the comments below and we'll definitely be happy to address it and give uh, umami powder a shot. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garen. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences.